What are some of the things that you should consider using along with your hyperbaric oxygen therapy to really optimize the benefits? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. What I'd like to do for the point of this video is really break it into a few different categories because ultimately there is no single answer to that question. There are a lot of things somebody could do to optimize their hyperbaric oxygen therapy depending on what the results that they're looking to get are. We know that hyperbaric has effects on our immune system. We know that hyperbaric has effect on inflammation. We know that hyperbaric oxygen has tremendous effects on our mitochondria and cellular ATP production. We know that hyperbaric oxygen is a great tool for healing, repairing, and regeneration of cells and tissues. So depending on what the health goals are or the health concerns are of the person using the chamber would really determine what other ingredients we would want to combine to optimize those effects. So I'm going to break them up into those categories. Let's start with the immune system. We know that hyperbaric oxygen activates our immune system to help improve our ability to fight infection. But what else can we combine in order to really boost immune function? We have a few options. Let's say from an IV standpoint, we could also be doing some ozone therapy. We know that ozone, another gas in the oxygen family, is terrific for helping to fight infection. So we could do ozone insufflation, or we can even do ozone IV. In the realm of IVs, we can also use high dose vitamin C for immune system boosting, or even a Myers cocktail, so that we're using IV nutrition along with hyperbaric oxygen. And together, those combinations are all appropriate for immune system function. Which one is best really determines on what type of immune stimulation we're looking for. So that would be a case by case basis. There's also a variety of supplements we would typically use for immune system function. Obviously, all the minerals are critical, especially zinc from an immune system standpoint. We also recommend active hexose correlated compound or AHCC, which is a very specific mushroom compound, which is terrific for improving immune system activation. And along with hyperbaric, can create a very robust immune response to any foreign invaders. Of course, another supplement would be vitamin D. Vitamin D is foundational for our immune system. So making sure someone is vitamin D sufficient, making sure they're getting the minerals, but especially zinc, and then a few other immune activators like AHCC and of course vitamin C, those are all well positioned to work well with oxygen from an immune system activation standpoint. And lastly, methylene blue. While methylene blue has a multitude of effects, and we'll talk about it a few different times during this video, we also know that methylene blue has great antimicrobial properties. And so especially if we're actively fighting an infection, using methylene blue along with hyperbaric oxygen is another great combination for immune system activation. Let's take the next category, mitochondrial function and ATP production or cellular energy production. So we know that hyperbaric is a great driver of fuel into the mitochondria to stimulate cellular energy. We also know that hyperbaric oxygen will help increase mitochondrial size, shape, and density, literally increasing the number of mitochondria we have. So as far as mitochondrial activity goes, I don't think anything even compares to the effect that hyperbaric oxygen can have. However, if we wanted to pair a few things to really maximize that, well, what are some of the other ingredients that go into mitochondrial function? How about the fuel that goes into your mouth? So switching from a primary glucose metabolism to a fat metabolism would really improve mitochondrial function. Taking that one step further and maximizing your ketone utilization could even be more efficient from a mitochondrial energy production standpoint. Using other precursors to NAD production like NMN or NR, like basically NAD precursors, also helps to increase the amount of raw material going into the mitochondria. So in addition to switching your fuel, the NAD precursors, and really making sure you're getting enough NAD and NAD precursors at the beginning of the electron transport chain, this is another place where methylene blue shines. Methylene blue has a great effect on complex one and complex two early on in the electron transport chain, donating energy into those systems to really create a high concentration gradient of electrons at the earlier steps of the electron transport chain. What are some of the other steps in the mitochondria that are rate limiting steps that are required for energy production? Well, making sure that you're sufficient in CoQ10 because CoQ10 is one of the mobile electron carriers in the electron transport chain. Using the appropriate frequencies of red and near infrared and infrared light because cytochrome C, another mobile electron carrier inside the electron transport chain, is very sensitive to those frequencies of red light. And so making sure that cytochrome C is sufficiently activated will be a requirement 
for appropriate and efficient ATP production. Of course, oxygen being one of the most important and most significant rate limiting steps to energy production is also going to be critical in that ATP cycle. And lastly, hydrogen. The hydrogen gradient is the last step of ATP production. And so creating a larger hydrogen gradient inside of our mitochondria to improve ATP synthesis at that last step at ATP synthase is also another great way to improve mitochondrial function. And all of these are great ways to making sure that we're maximizing mitochondrial function. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. Let's talk about inflammation reduction. Hyperbaric absolutely reduces the cytokine response. It reduces inflammatory cytokines, reducing systemic inflammation, but it also stimulates anti-inflammatory cytokines and helps to stimulate regulatory cytokines, which are ultimately helping to keep the balance of the inflammation system inside of our bodies. So again, hyperbaric alone has a tremendous effect on inflammation, but what else can we include? Well, red light therapy and really the entire classification of photobiomodulation we could add here because different frequencies of light, different frequencies of color have a tremendous effect on helping to reduce systemic inflammation. We can use PEMF, which will help improve circulation, also help improve lymphatic flow, all of which is going to help to make sure that we're, number one, nourishing our cells as well as we can, but also eliminating toxins and other cellular waste products out of the system, also helping to reduce that inflammatory cycle. On the IV side, we can consider another Myers cocktail, which will also help to reduce inflammation and oxidative stress. We can use glutathione with those IVs. That's really going to help reduce some of that inflammatory response as well. And on the supplement side, we can consider enzymes, which are great at gobbling up proteins of inflammation, especially if taken on an empty stomach. We can consider the variety of different curcumin and turmeric products that are out there, which also have well-known anti-inflammatory properties. We can also consider ingredients like tart cherry, which also have amazing anti-inflammatory properties. There's many, many different supplements to consider. But again, here we're looking at the anti-inflammatory approach of hyperbaric oxygen and just some of those ingredients and modalities that we could consider to maximize that program. Like talking about the mitochondrial programming or the immune system programming, this is all gonna be subject to individual case-by-case -case basis and what that person actually needs. Lastly, let's talk about the regeneration qualities of hyperbaric. And in fact, let's imagine that we're trying to maximize the regenerative quality of hyperbaric, but minimize some of the oxidative stress of hyperbaric at the same time. We know that the repetitive use of hyperbaric oxygen starts to act like a cell signaling cascade to stimulate cellular healing, cellular repair, and cellular regeneration. We also know that high levels of hyperbaric may stimulate an increase in oxidative stress. And maybe this person, for whatever reason, is trying to maximize those regenerative properties, but minimize their oxidative stress. There are a few ways to handle this. One is we can start by adding certain antioxidants to their system before they even go into the chamber. A few of my favorites, hydrogen water, absolutely, being a selective antioxidant. Molecular hydrogen really has the ability to reduce free radicals and make them benign. And so hydrogen water, about 30 minutes before a hyperbaric session, will still allow a lot of the benefits of hyperbaric to exist, but reduce some of that oxidative stress. A glutathione push before a hyperbaric chamber session would also do something very similar. Glutathione is less selective and a little bit more global, and so glutathione will have a larger antioxidant effect. Remember, that's not for everybody. The oxidative signaling of hyperbaric for some patients is actually really important, and we don't want to diminish that. But in certain cases, if we're looking to reduce the oxidative stress while still having a lot of that cell signaling cascade of repair and regeneration, these antioxidants prior to going into the chamber could really help reduce that effect. You could also consider using some oral supplementation. Vitamin C, selenium, vitamin E, these are all very well-known, easy to access, over-the-counter supplements that are also gonna help reduce the oxidative stress in our body. They are all very powerful antioxidants. So the hyperbaric could be used to stimulate the repair and the regeneration, and these IVs 
or hydrogen water or these supplements can buffer some of that oxidative stress to make sure that we're not pushing that envelope harder than we need to. There are a number of additional ways that we can break these categories up, but I wanted to just share some of the more common and some of the more effective strategies by combining certain other strategies with hyperbaric, keeping a very specific outcome in mind to make sure that we're maximizing the effect of hyperbaric along with these other strategies that we're using. As always, I appreciate your attention and I'll see you on the next video. Whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.